One interesting application of Euler's theorem from the previous lecture regards primality tests and something called Carmichael numbers. So first, let's look at Fermat's little theorem. If P is prime and A is not a multiple of P, then A to the P minus one is definitely equivalent to one mod P. This is just Euler's theorem in disguise. Since A is not a multiple of P and P is prime, it's relatively prime to P. Also, since P is prime, phi of P is just P minus one. So A to the phi of P is equivalent to one mod P. And there we have it. A to the P minus one is equivalent to one mod P. We can use this, however, to see that the number 1027 is not prime. 1027 is not divisible by 2, 3, 5, or 11, all of which have quick divisibility tricks, so you can check that, but beyond this point it might get kind of difficult to try to factor it by hand. Let's assume for the moment that 1027 is prime. Well, 2 is definitely not a multiple of 1027, so if 1027 is prime and 2 is not a multiple of p, then 2 to the 1026 should be equivalent to 1 mod 1027. So if 1027 were prime, this would be true. Finding the smallest positive x so that 2 to the 1026 is equivalent to x mod 1027 is kind of laborious to do by hand, but we can do it. So 2 to the first is 2, 2 to the fourth is 4, and so forth, up to 2 to the 10th is 1024. 2 to the 11th and so forth. At each step, all we're doing is multiplying by 2 and subtracting 1027. Okay, we multiply by 2 until multiplying by 2 is bigger than the base, then subtract 1027. Multiplying by 2, because 2 to the 11th times 2 would be 2 to the 12th. Multiply by 2 to get 2042, but subtract 1027. 2 to the 13th is then going to be multiply 2 to the 12th by 2, so get 2030 and then subtract 1027, etc., etc. It's very fast for a computer, at least. Alternatively, there is a technique called the successive squaring algorithm that would allow you to do this by hand fairly quickly. But eventually, what you'll end up with is 2 to the 1026 is equivalent to 857 at mod 1027. That is not equivalent to 1, so since 2 to the 1026 is not equivalent to 1 mod 1027, 1027 must not be prime. This gives us a notion of a primality test to test if a certain number is prime or not. Some sort of quick way, for a computer at least, to determine whether a given number is prime. Finding big prime numbers is an important part of computer security, and computers can generate large numbers very easily. The question then becomes, if it generates a large number, did it generate a prime one? In the previous slide, we checked if 2 to the n minus 1 is equivalent to 1 mod n. If it's not, n is not prime. Suppose, however, 2 to the n minus 1 was equivalent to 1 mod n. That doesn't actually tell you n is prime. If n is prime, then this must be true, but it doesn't work in the converse. If this is true, it doesn't necessarily mean n is prime. However, if this is not true, then n is not prime. So what we can do is we can check 2 to the n minus 1, but then also check 3 to the n minus 1, and 4 to the n minus 1, and so forth and so forth and so forth, all the way up to n minus 1. Notice that none of these numbers are multiples of n, 2, 3, 4, up to n minus 1. They're too small. So if n is prime, all of these must be equivalent to 1 modulo n. If any one of them fails to be equivalent to 1 mod n, any one of these is not equivalent to 1 mod n, then n was not prime. But even if they're all equivalent to 1 mod n, you actually can't conclude that n is prime. So here's what's called the Fermat primality test. Here's a flowchart algorithm for it, and let's try to understand what it does. So we start and we input some number. N is the number that we are going to try to determine, is it prime? So here, A is simply taken to be two, K is zero, X is one. At all steps, X is going to be equivalent to A to the K mod N. So notice that two to the zero is equivalent to one mod N. So we do start out there. K is our exponent. 
if it has reached as high as we need it to go, that's when this is going to exit. But as long as k hasn't gotten as high as it needs to go, we multiply x by a. So whatever I had, I had a to some power, I multiply by a, and I have a higher power, and k increases by one. So I take a higher power of a, and I increase my exponent tracker by one. So this keeps on computing, x is equivalent to k mod n in, uh, sorry, um, a to the k mod n until that exponent reaches as high as we were trying to get. So I keep looping this over and over again until I have computed a to the n minus 1 mod n. Then this would be true, and I exit here. x is now equivalent to a to the n minus 1. Is that 1 or not? If it is, something happens. If it's not, however, n was definitely not prime. If a to the n minus 1 is not equivalent to 1 mod n, notice I'm allowed to use equals here rather than equivalent because I was just using the division algorithm to always give me remainders. So being equal to 1 as a remainder would mean equivalent to 1 mod n. If that's false, n was not prime, and you can stop. Suppose, however, that it was. Now, a started at 2, but what I need to do is actually check not just 2 to the n minus 1, but also 3 to the n minus 1, 4 to the n minus 1, and so forth. So if I haven't done all of that yet, increase a by 1 and reset and start over. So going through all of this computes is 2 to the n minus 1 equivalent to 1. If it is, instead of trying 2, let's try 3 is 3 to the n minus 1 equivalent to 1. If it is, try 4. Is 4 to the n minus 1 equivalent to 1? If it is, and so forth and so forth. Now let's suppose you get all the way through. At any point, if one of these things to the n minus 1 was not equivalent to 1, then n is not prime, and you can say, nope, not prime. But if every single one of them was equivalent to 1 mod n, and you got through the entire list, you shouldn't output anything because you can't actually conclude n is prime. While you haven't shown that n is not prime, this never actually shows a number to be prime. Suppose there's some number where all of these things are equivalent to 1 mod n, 2 to the n minus 1, 3 to the n minus 1, 4 to the n minus 1, all the way up to n minus 1 to the n minus 1 are all equivalent to 1 modulo n. You don't necessarily conclude n is prime, you simply fail to show that it isn't. If there is some n where all of these are equivalent to 1, but it's still not a prime number, that would be pretty remarkable. Is it even possible? If you have some number so that a to the n minus 1 is equivalent to 1 mod n for every choice of a, 2 through n minus 1, and n still fails to be prime, that's what's called a Carmichael number. Are there any Carmichael numbers? Yes, in fact, there's infinitely many. The smallest one, however, is 561. So what you could do, you know, given sufficient motivation, is check. 2 to the 560th is equivalent to 1 mod 561. 3 to the 560th is equivalent to 1 mod 561. 4 to the 560th is equivalent to 1 mod 561. All the way until 560 to the 560th is equivalent to 1 mod 561. These will all be true. But 561 is definitely not prime. It's divisible by 3, 11, and 17. It's their product. So we have a number here where the Fermat primality test never told me that the number wasn't prime, but it still doesn't mean that the number is prime. So Carmichael numbers are kind of interesting. You should probably just take my word for it that 561 is a Carmichael number. Unless you're willing to write an algorithm to check all of these, it would be awfully tedious. Um, but there are Carmichael numbers. In fact, there are infinitely many. We're not going to get into a characterization of them. For our purposes, this is just an interesting aside that it is possible for a to the n minus 1 to be equivalent to 1 mod n for all reasonable choices of a and still not be prime. So primality tests get deeper than this, of course. We're not really going to get into them. In computer science, they're very important. In number theory, they're very important, but it's not a topic that we are going to really get into. 
Um, for us, however, do remember that Euler's theorem is definitely true. A to the phi of n is always equivalent to 1 mod n, as long as a and n are relatively prime, and that's going to remain very important to us.